Hello children, Deshiya Vidyashala Samiti Shumoga welcomes you to the first year biology practicals. So this is our institution giving you a warm welcome to get set to learn your practicals through video classes. I am Shruti Ramaswamy from the Department of Biology. Well children, this is practical number 25. It's the study of human skeleton. The aim is to study the major components of the human skeleton. Of course, this gives a framework, a shape to the body. See children, this particular picture, credit goes to Aaron. It depicts every part of the bone here. It has been labeled. If you just have a look at it, it's wonderful for you to remember for your practical classes as well as for your theory. See here, the names has been put here parietal, frontal, nasal, orbit, humerus, radius, ulna. You just, you just work out looking into the various labelings that have been put here at the region where the bones are present. So this is a wonderful picture and for you it's easy to learn. Let us know the principle behind this. Human skeleton in adults, make a note children, it is in adults it's composed of 206 bones. It's divisible into two categories, axial and appendicular skeleton. Axial skeleton, it consists of the bones of the skull, vertebral column, and rib cage. Appendicular skeleton, it consists of the bones of the limbs along with your girdles, pectoral and pelvic girdle. The skeleton, it provides a supporting framework for the body and protects the internal organs. It also participates in movement and locomotion in association with the muscles. So beautiful is the framework of the body. See here, we make a mention that the human skeleton in adults is 260 bones. It comprises of 260 bones, rather two, not six bones. So whereas in case of the small children, the bone, number of the bones will be around 300 in their number. So, 206 bones, they are available in the human adult skeleton, whereas in the small child, it would be around 300 bones that would be available. Why such a difference? In the small children, the bones would not have been articulated or fused with each other. Slowly, they start fusing. See, I give you an example. Agashte hutta the mago, yet the kutkunda nadia kagadilla. Adu, he go worldly kukuda agadilla. Yakin thildre, bones ella yeni there, other fusion aglela. So head portionally, natbai, illi, a mulegal yaudu fuse agiradilla. Hagagi, when you keep your hand here, you can feel the palpation. So here, in the same way, what bones are present in the tail portion, they all are in bits, they all need to fuse. Hagagi, Ahutad Mago, Sumar Dinagala Nantar Dali, Hige, Wurl Kulate, Amele Ambega Lidate, Kurate, Nantar Dali, Nilate, Hagagi, our son Maklali, number of bones three hundred, adults Nali, it is two not six. Anyhow, for our convenient studies, we classify them into the axial and the appendicular skeleton. So what are the requirements for this particular experiment? It's the specimen of a human skeleton. on the outline, you have a look at it. So this is the whole skeleton. For our studies, we bifurcate this into axial skeleton and then it is the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton, around 80 bones are there. Appendicular skeleton, 126 bones are there. Total, it is 206. Are you seeing here? Skull, vertebral column, and the rib cage. Iligabandaga, see here, four limbs, hind limbs, pectoral girdle, and then the pelvic girdle. Okay, now, we shall just look into the study of this skull. So, skull bones around 29, they are there. See here, there is a frontal lobe and then there is a parietal lobe. Then you would be finding on the sides there would be the temporal lobe and then the occipital lobe. See frontal lobe, 
parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and then there is a occipital lobe. Okay. So here, this is about the skull bones that are present. Can you see here? There is a nasal bone present. And exactly where the tear glands are available, there is presence of the lacrimal glands. Then here, there is a nasal concave. Later on, you find a fixed one, it's maxilla. And then you find a movable one, it is mandible. Can you have a look at here? And then children, for a shape of the face, the zygomatic bone, it's responsible. So it might be wide, when you find a face which is wider, and then it might be very small, when you find a face of a shape very small here. Okay? So this was the frontal view of the human skull. So just have a look here. You would be finding there would be a U-shaped structure. It's said to be the hyoid bone. It's called the hyoid bone. Exactly above the tracheal region, you find the presence of this hyoid bone. Okay? Then there would be the facial bones that are available here. Wherein you would be seeing the zygomatic bone, omer bone, the maxilla, palatine. This palatine is present near the maxilla and mandible. And then below this is the mandible. Look at the position where the hyoid bone is located. Okay? On the inner side of the ear, you find there is incus, malleus and stapes. This is about the skull bones and the facial bones with the hyoid bone together. Now, coming down to the vertebral... Well, children, let us now know about the vertebral column. See here... In the vertebral column, in the neck portion, there will be the seven cervical vertebrae. And then in the thoracic region, there will be 12 thoracic vertebrae. Then comes the lumbar region, five of them. And then you can find a sacrum and a coccyx, each one. But here, while it is in the small child, they are five and they are fused. Can you have a look at in the skeleton, see, in the neck region, we would be finding there would be seven cervical vertebra. Okay? Seven cervical vertebra. Then, twelve in the thoracic region. So, they are thoracic vertebrae. Here, the whole weight of the body is being borne by these vertebrae and they are lumbar vertebrae. Then, here, you find there would be a sacral vertebra and then this you call it to be as a tailbone, it is coccyx. In a small child, it would be five, but on reaching the adult condition, so you can find they are all fused together and there would be 206 bones together. Okay? Just have a look at this vertebrae, each of it, what character do they bear? Rather bear. So here, there is a body, a small pedicel protrusion. Then you can find there are articular processes. They are the ones which help in articulating the adjacent vertebrae. Then there is a small laminae and a spinal protrusion. Are you finding a small cavity-like structure here? This is the region through which the spinal cord runs. So this is a side view. You can visualize the various processes present over there. In the skeleton, in the skeleton, you can find some yellow colored structures which have protruded out and these, these, they indicate that they are the spinal nerves. They are the spinal nerves. Children, just to see here, in between the vertebrae, there is white colored structure present. They are the fibrous cartilage. They are the fibrous cartilage. See here, they act as the shock absorbers. We hop, we jump, 
nothing happens to the vertebral column because of the presence of this fibrocartilage. Children, we are supposed to know that these cartilages on aging, they become slightly thin. That's why with the aging process, one has to be very careful so that they are properly positioned and properly functioning. How should you be careful while bending, while lifting up some uh, very heavy objects? One has to be careful or otherwise a small jerk of this fibrocartilage will just put pressure on the spinal nerves here and that's where they say it's a vertebral disc prolapse. That's what they say, vertebral disc prolapse. Uh, prolapse. Okay, so that was about the vertebral column. Next, we are supposed to know about the rib cage. See here, the rib cage, the word itself is indicating it's cage like, giving an ultimate protection to the heart as well as the lungs. They are the visceral organs. So beautiful is the framework of the body. So, hats off to the super engineer, none other than the god. So, see here, the first rib which is present over here. So, totally one to seven ribs, they are said to be as the true ribs. They are called the true ribs. Then you find eight to twelve. So, eight to twelve. So, here you would be finding these are false ribs, but here the eleventh and the twelfth which we see, they do not reach the sternum. So, that's why we say they are floating ribs. Only 1 to 7 true ribs are there. I am only 8th to 10th in there. Other false ribs are there. 11th to 12th in there. They do not reach the sternum at all. That's why we say they are floating ribs. They are tucked here itself. Okay. So, now you find each of the ribs, they are just connecting to the sternum by the help of the small cartilage like structure. Okay, that was about the rib cage. Coming to the appendicular skeleton. In the appendicular skeleton, we come across the presence of the pectoral girdle and then the pelvic girdle. Let us first have a look at this picture and then I shall show it in this skeleton. See here, on the dorsal side, there is a triangular structure which you call it to be as the scapula. Here, there would be a collarbone, it's a clavicle. Then there is a coracoid process here and a small acromion process. So this is humerus, the bone of the arm. So there is a ball-like structure, it's called the head of the humerus. This head of the humerus, it is just locked into the glenoid cavity. So, this cavity into which the head has been placed or articulated, you just say this to be as the ball and socket joint, the ball and the socket joint. So, this is about the pectoral girdle. So, in the pelvic girdle, what do we observe? There is a broader pelvic region, ilium. Then we find there is presence of the ischium, then there is a pubic bone and here on the ventral side it is fused. The hip bone on the ventral side is fused. You just say it is pubic symphysis, pubic symphysis. So the whole body's weight is being borne by this pelvic girdle. Come on children, it's here that we observe. Ili, Benin Hatra, Vandu, triangle shaped mule barte ni hige hindak maadid koodlene ni sapura idre ee mule eddi kaanate chippu idanna scapula ant heli karte illi kaanta idella this is the clavicle the collar bone ant heli helte yaru thumba beautiful idare avarige collar bone eddu kaanate ant heli heltare anyhow there is a small cavity here this cavity is said to be the glenoid cavity into which the ball of this humerus is just attached. You say it's a ball and socket to join. This joint is said to be a ball and a socket to join. Idu pectoral girdle. Ili pelvic girdle ke bandaga. Yen nortai the way. 
this portion you call this to be as ileum okay then there is presence of this ischium now this pubic bone it gets fused ventrally by the help of a pubic symphysis children when you happen to see a skeleton whether it's a male skeleton or a female skeleton you can identify looking at this particular region the pelvic girdle is quite broad in case of a female skeleton see here this pubic symphysis is made up of a fibrocartilage again you see it has a prime importance in a female while she is delivering a child during parturition this pubic symphysis it widens because the pelvic girdle also widens there once after the parturition a female is advised to take rest for a span of about 3 months you know why this dislocation or rather the expansion that has happened will have to once again get replenished and that's about the pelvic girdle now coming to the four limbs see here this arm bone which is present you say it is humerus this is humerus then there is a elbow joint here you call this to be as hinge joint from here you find two of the bones that have arose so here it is radius and ulna radius and ulna then this is the metacarpal then carpals as well as metacarpals carpals and metacarpals prati bettigino muru marks tara kanta ide aa muru marks tara iruvantadu that's the region you say the bones are phalanges okay wrist bone ide so carpal metacarpal amale phalanges are present ಆ ತಂಬು ಪೋರ್ಷನ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಎರಡು ಬಾಕಿ ಬೆಟ್ಟುಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಮೂರು ಫ್ಯಾಲೆಂಜಸ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ ಅವೈಲೇಬಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ದಿ ಹೈಂಡ್ ಲೆಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹೈಂಡ್ ಲೆಮ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಫೈಂಡಿಂಗ್ ದಸ್ ಪೆಕ್ಟೋರಲ್ ಗಾರ್ಡಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಕ್ಯಾವಿಟಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಸಿಟಾಬಲಮ್ ದ ಬಾಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಸ್ ಫೀಮರ್ ದ ಲಾಂಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬೋನ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮರಸ್ and here in the knee portion there is presence of the knee bone it's the patella later on you find in the posterior part of the leg there are two bones which are fibula and tibia tibia and fibula so among the two the fibula doesn't have much function to perform the body weight the posture everything will be just helped out through the presence of tibia then you find there is in the ankle region the carpals once again you see they are tarsals kayile adre carpals illi adre they are tarsals then later on in the feet portion there are we meta tarsals prati ond toe nalli nodidaga you find they are having the phalanges so that's it about the skeletal system okay you can have a look at you can have a look at the skeleton again and have a review of course axial bones they are present in the axis and on the either side what we are getting you just to say they are appendicular so skull vertebrae rib cage axial then you observe here pectoral girdle pelvic girdle four limbs and hind limbs they are appendicular skeleton